So I don't know if you guys remember, this is going to be like the shortest vlog. So it'll make up for the really long ones that I've been doing the last uh, couple days. I don't know if you guys remember, but I did, I did a kind of a little mini review of that one. Uh, that one right there. Operation Zero Tolerance. One of, I think, the greatest and most well uh, put together graphic novel collections I think I've ever seen. As far as ones that, as far as from a story that took place in multiple books and things like that. Um, I think, I think Avengers The Crossing is a close second. Uh, although I feel like there's a lot of callbacks to stuff that happened before. Um, so I feel like there should have been maybe some more more material even though it's an enormous book i actually think at a first glance i feel like it's bigger than zero tolerance so with that in mind when i get the essentially the contemporary the book that happened a bit prior and up through zero tolerance one of my greatest one of my favorite storylines from the 90s the trial of gambit when I got this book, I was expecting it to be at least just as well curated. Maybe maybe not quite, just because it's not as big of a story. But I was expecting some sort of cohesiveness to it, right? But here's what they did. They took the entire storyline of the Phalanx thing with the Shi'ar. I can't really even call it a thing. But let, let's call it the Annihilation pre-prequel because it, it deals with the phalanx on the Shi'ar homeworld. It's, it's like a, a ragtag group of X-Men. I mean, this is right after Onslaught. And they just go and deal with this. That gra gladiator shows up, begs for their help, you know, humbles himself. Well, he doesn't humble himself. Cannonball humbles him, and it's one of the greatest moments in comic book history. But anyway, so, you know, they go off, they help, and they, they get lost on the way back, and they get kidnapped, right? And that's when you get into the Gambit stuff and all that. This does what The Crossing doesn't, right? There's a lot of references in The Crossing to stuff that happened before, and you're not really sure what's going on. So, if this had just taken place in, like, the three or four issues that The Trial of Gambit did take place after the whole Phalanx thing, I think that would have been really confusing. So I understand why they included the entire Phalanx storyline as well, the, the Shi'ar storyline. My question is, why did they also include the other books? So those all have it on Uncanny X-Men. Why did they also include the entire story from X-Men where the, the remaining X-Men, the ones that stayed at the mansion, the ones that stayed on Earth, that where they went to, to Hong Kong, I mean, to deal with Shang-Chi and to deal with um, Wilson Fisk and this whole potential cure for the legacy virus. I mean, like, it's a great story. Amazing art. Uh, Carlos Pacheco is one of my favorite, favorite artists of all time. Uh, so this this book has probably, like, three of my favorite artists ever. Joe Mad, Carlos, and um, Mel Ruby. Jeez, that was, that was embarrassing. Uh, Mel Ruby, I haven't seen a lot of his stuff lately. Come to think of it now. Yeah, Mel Ruby's probably one of my, one, one of my big favorites from the 90s just because he had this, like, just really clean, realistic, but at the same time, like super great comic book style. Like it, it just worked in so many ways. Here's here's a shot of Gambit from this book. That's one of my favorites, right? So compare, you know, Joe Mad's version to Mal Ruby's version, right? There's, I mean, there's a huge difference, but like the, the, it, it, he adds just this like level of realism to it that is lovely. I mean, I can't say which one I like better because I have this fanboyish position with uh, with Joe Mad's art, but I'm just saying. So anyway, the whole reason I'm talking about this is because they, so they included both of those, and then they also included the two flashback issues, which really are non sequitur. The flashback issues of that year, 97, 97, Marvel decided July or May, I was only May, it was May, May's issues were all going to be flashback issues. It was like a month off for all the regular teams. Let's do, like, let's, a bunch of us just talk about stuff that happened before. So, like, four or five Spider-Man issue, or four or five Spider-Man books, however many were running at the time, all ran, you know, various stories from Pete's childhood. The Uncanny book deals with a young Boulevard Trask, Rachel Summers Phoenix, and 
time travel, the origin of the Sentinels, all that kind of stuff. So like completely, completely non sequitur to everything that's going on. The only thing that I can say, and this is a huge, enormous spoiler for this story if you've never read it, so I will say skip the next like 14 seconds for starting now. The, uh, the other flashback that's included, the Uncanny, or the X-Men flashback, is definitely about Magneto, who is kind of the ultimate villain at the end of the story. And now we're out of spoiler territory again. <laughs> I think you should definitely read this if you, if you can find this. This just came out. This is this was released today. I'm super happy that I got it. I pre-ordered it. Stuff like this keeps me going, keeps me motivated to write more just because, just because reading stuff that I love makes me want to create more stuff. Makes me want to create stuff that I love. So let's go ahead and do that. I really can't tell if leaving the autofocus, autofocus assist on or off helps obviously the lighting helps i mean this is crisp lighting i just got to do the lighting in here really like once once the actual proper lighting is done in this room i won't even have these problems i'm just saying i pulled together some art for the book i put up my my question regarding which style boot to do i'm getting some good feedback on that already i mean it's midnight uh, I edited the Suicide Squad video, and I'm going to be putting that up probably for Thursday, the review. I'll put the podcast up also on Thursday. I don't know if you guys know, but we have a podcast on SoundCloud, T3G Media. Check it out. Just the two movie reviews so far, but it's probably what, where we're going to move our uh, media talk, our TV shows and all that stuff. We'll still do a video here, but for those who don't want to necessarily watch an hour-long video, throw throw the audio on in the background. Anyway, this is a shelf that's being built by my mother-in-law for my bathroom. She's uh, real helpful that way. That's basically all I got. Appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.